So uh, next section, uh, my name is Rob Sherwood. I'm CTO at Big Switch Networks. And now we're going to talk about service chaining and network function virtualization support. So um, as we discussed in the last part, the default policy inside a logical route is permit. So that is, you know, as VM A in one segment talks to another router, another uh, VM, it's, a, it's allowed. Now, what we can actually do at a policy level is say, don't go direct. I want you to go through this third party other thing. And so that other thing can be a firewall, it can be a load balancer, it can be a user detection device, it can be anything you want at an IP level. It works at like a next top basis. Uh, and then this comes back, and then this device here has a default route that points to the logical router. And then the logical router is smart enough to say, oh, you know, this came from this device. I have another policy that I can send this on directly. So the way this works in practice is we actually just do standard routing. Uh, we're not doing tagging. We're not doing any sort of encapsulation. So if you imagine this VM A has MAC address AAA, and its default route is MAC address RRR, and the destination B has IP 2222. When the router resends it, it's just rewriting the MAC address and decrementing TTL. It's not doing anything different to the packet. So this device doesn't have to be special. It doesn't have to implement VXLAN. You don't have to do anything to the individual VMs. It's actually just routing. It's really intelligent, complicated routing, but it's just routing at a data plane level. Interesting. Um, and so. The really interesting thing here is you don't have to route to just one thing. You can actually leverage some of the ECMP bits of the hardware and actually route to a whole cluster of, of VMs. So it can go, it's, think of it like a, a poor man's load balancer. And then once it goes to one of these, they all have the default route back to the logical router and the router goes on to the, the destination. So you can imagine um, you have your choice now deploying kind of a hardware, traditional load balancer or traditional firewall. Or you could imagine deploying this as a whole bunch of service VMs. Do you, and do you plan to do any sort of L2 interception and not have to do L3 rewrites? Um, that is the meeting that I skipped this morning um, because I was running a little bit long with this presentation. Hopefully, it was uh, well, well, well received. But <laughs> <laughs> um, would it be insane to have, let's say, if you had, you know, like 30 machines and Wh whatever you ask, I'm going to say yes because it'd be funnier that way. <laughs> no, 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 I'm saying like, like, like 30 machines and put each ma machine in its own logical segment. If you want, you know, uh, actually, no, I wanted the same. I wanted the same IP address, you know, same IP address scheme, but just a roundabout way to, I guess, get L4 to L7 insertion in that in that segment. So, um, the, I think the thing you're talking about is yes, and then just a matter of you know how do we make the the, the GUI the, the the interface a little bit cleaner so people don't have right. to manually right, trunk right, right, that right. together. Yeah. Um, let me do this in you know, under 20 seconds. Uh, so I'm going to create uh, an ACMP group that I call NFE. And I'm going to add a whole bunch of addresses to it. So this is going to be my, my target VMs. <laughs> Those are the virtual firewalls or whatever? These are the virtual firewalls or whatever. Um, and then I'm going to create a policy that I call NFE. And that policy is going to say, I want you to send the action is going to be next top. And see, it's found my NFE list there. And so I want you to send anything from the green tenant on its web, uh, on, on its web logical segment so it's going to the green tenant on its app logical segment. I want you to send it through this NFB group. And that's created. So it's as easy as that. Um, you know, clicking into this a, a little bit more. Um, Does it matter, though, if that load, ba you know, load balancer or firewall is performing that? Do you, do you care about that anymore? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's what we call L3 service insertion. So whether it's NAT or a firewall or a load balancer or uh, what's a, a crazier case? Somebody was talking to me about it, an SS7 gateway. I mean, it, I'm saying in the past, I just feel like when the conversation was more around flow technology, you needed to know if it was going to be changing the IP address. That way you can map the flows accordingly. Like now, so when it comes back out, it right. basically gets another routing hop. 
And so if it comes out completely different, right. you need to make sure that on ingress, the, the routing rules still apply. Right. Okay. So if you imagine if you had a really broken service that just completely mangled the packet and it came out garbage, right. it would probably get weirdly routed because it would come out with a completely different IP address. Yeah, so I'm just saying, how easy is it to build in, or do you even need like a connector if you want to integrate a Palo Alto firewall or Cisco and firewall so, or what um, have you? And so work that we're doing in OpenStack is exactly to do that. So we actually have firewalls as a service is uh, work that we've focused on there where there's a, a standard API that's being implemented by a bunch of companies. And then from an OpenStack perspective, it would actually call into our our controller and set all of that up for you, both in terms of the routes on our side as well as the policies on that box. Interesting. And you know because and I haven't talked about uh, at least uh, on camera. Uh, we just because of us talked about it before, but um, because our CLI and our GUI are really just REST API clients, um, obviously we want them to be first class citizens, and we'll eventually add support for that. But in the meantime, if people want to script this up themselves, or and that's how our OpenStack plugin works, you know, call into this system. You can do it through there. Not OpenStack, just enterprise network in the data center. Yeah, is, is, is it as easy though as just you know putting that appliance in the proper logical segments yep. and creating the, the proper routes, or do you need more integration under the covers? Um, so I mean, it depends how complicated your policies are. For example, if you did something like NAT, where it really does go in with one destination IP and come out with another one, right. you have to make sure that the router is able to do the right thing on on egress as well as on ingress. Right. Um, and so. That mental math is more complicated than I would like, given what we're trying to target with our, our product. Uh, and then, you know, those are things that we're looking at fixing you know, going forward. Okay. Cool. Uh, the one thing I did want to focus on, you know, for, just mention briefly, is um, notice I, you know, we we have basically this is how you define ACLs. So for an ACL, you're used to having you know permit or deny. So we have permit, deny, and we have next hop. And that that's how easy it is to to set up the service insertion. So on, that, on that insertion, okay. could you selectively insert only a few hosts within a certain L3 domain? You can do it by like CIDR prefix, like if you wanted to chop up a subnet. Got it, okay. Um, you, you, and you can have individual hosts if you want to. I mean, eventually you run out of room in terms of, you know, these are actually using that 2000 you know, ACL entry okay. space. But um, in practical terms, what we find is that people really want to use an L2 segment really as almost a, a group of hosts. Policy domain or something. Yeah, like exactly. And so given that they're so easy to create in this way, it actually maps much more easily than traditional VLANs do. Do you have some health checking against the pool of we do not, um, but because you can manage that pool through the APIs, the idea is that you could actually implement that for yourself. I mean, this is a, a fairly early use case for us. You know, at least from, from our side, we've implemented all of the, the right architecture, but a lot of those kind of nice-to-haves that you'd really want to use to deploy this in practice, you'd either have to go through OpenStack right now or Reddit yourself. If I deploy, say, uh, eight virtual uh, service engines and then have to rip one out for some reason, does the ECMP rehash and screw up all my flows? Um, yes, and then the, so the, there's actually two solutions to that. One is uh, all the commercial services, um, they actually will do state sharing among them. Like, so if, if you have uh, you know, a, a VM firewall from a, a valid company, they have to deal with this problem anyways. Yep. Right, and so they already have a solution to that, which is they do the flow state sharing among the, they, they create a cluster of these firewalls and it shares state among them. So if the, recent, the ECMP rehashes, and goes everywhere, um, then the new packet, see the old packet's going to the new service node, they still have to be able to handle that. The other thing, and this is something that I'm starting to explore, is some of the hardware we have actually has more resilient hashing that actually stops that from happening. It seems like if you fix it, you know, at three bits of, of ECMP hash, then every time one comes up on the wrong answer, just feed it in again and find a new box for that one. It's, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's the right intuition. I see. 